Hi, this is PJ Brunet from pjbrunet.com, and welcome to the history of analytics. I think this is an important subject right now because there's a lot of people studying user experience and product management and various other um, areas of interest right now that are pretty hot. And I just realized nobody is really teaching the history of analytics where it came from. And you probably think about um, analytics first and foremost as analytics.com, which is a domain that Google owns. But before we get into Google Analytics, um, the story goes way, way back uh, before, long before Google had any involvement in analytics. And in fact, uh, they were not even close to being the first company that was um, involved in analytics. So um, I just want to start off by saying if you have any criticism or comment, just leave a comment. Um, thumbs up, thumbs down. That doesn't really help me improve my, um, my information. So grab a cup of coffee. Uh, this might be a little dry at points, and you um, might fall asleep. <laughs> so... Um, yeah, try to stay awake. <laughs> I'll try to do the same. So, this I would say the year that um, analytics started would be 1999. And, I mean, of course it goes back before that, but that would, I would say that was a pivotal year in the internet. Um, people were starting to sign up for their internet service provider in their neighborhood. And uh, the internet was becoming a more of a mainstream thing. I, I happened to work at an internet for service provider in Florida, and it was just a, literally a mom-and-pop type of place. The, the father owned the gas stations in town, and he um, self-financed to buy a, a bunch of um, a rack of modems downtown, and we were out in the country, um, and people called us up, and we signed them up for internet service. So that was sort of the stage we were at back in 1999. Um, and the the main language that everyone used was Perl. You know, there was other programming languages back then. There was, you know, Java, of course, and PHP hadn't even been invented yet. So any kind of... Um, traffic tracking would have been done with, most likely it would have been done with Perl, which is spelled P-E-R-L. And Perl was often called, referred to as the duct tape of the internet because most of the internet was connected using Perl scripts. And they're called scripts because, um, you know, a script is a, app, is a software application that essentially just runs from top to bottom like a like a movie script so there of course Perl had a conditional statements and um, you know logic but for the most part these things were called scripts because they they were very simple they ran from you know they ran in sequence from you know step by step one um, instruction at a time so they were not very sophisticated um, but but Perl, you know, it it came to be a very sophisticated language, um, and I don't want to get too much into the programming part of it because I know that's not really interesting to most people who are just trying to track their users. And um, this is something now that's really popular. It's it's uh, I, I'm I'm a little bit surprised how popular Google Analytics is among non-technical people. Um, considering there's just so many d different options out there at this point, but um, Google Analytics definitely seems to be <clears throat> the 500-pound gorilla that everyone um, is gravitating to. So let's just get started. So 1999, uh, we didn't have any kind of app stores. There was um, there was no Stack Exchange. There was no GitHub. So, where did you find your software? They had directories of scripts. 
and you know most of them were written in Perl. You might have had um, I'm I'm I don't even remember, but you might have had some scripts in other languages, but for the most part it was Perl. And one of the first scripts that most people came to be familiar with was a guest book script. So you might go to someone's website and they they would have a guest book where you could say, "Hello, I'm visiting from, you know, Texas or something." And of course, you know, spammers figured that out pretty quick and um but that's <laughs> that's another story. But um you know, we didn't really have spammers back then like we do today. Um, you know, the, the Internet was still pretty much a small community. <clears throat> and a lot of these uh, scripts were free. And one of those, you know, and if you knew Perl really well, um, you might have known that it was possible to track um, something that someone clicked on using the something called CGI, Common Gateway Interface. And this was uh, pretty tricky to do with Perl, but it wasn't it wasn't that hard. And essentially what you would do is the um, when you see those URLs in your browser with a question mark, that's CGI. So when someone clicks a URL, or what some, when someone clicks a link on your website and you want to track that click, what's happening is a, it's called a redirect, a redirect script. So instead of going directly to the website that you want it to go to, we take you to a Perl script that captures what you wanted to click on and then we record that. And now remember, we didn't even have, uh, most of us did not have databases at that point. So if you clicked on something and we wanted to record that, we would have saved that to basically a text file. And they called that a, te a flat file. They still call that a flat file. And that flat file um, would, have, would, have tr uh, would have evolved to track millions and millions of um, clicks. And one of, it, one of the most famous... Um, click tracking websites if you can if you can really dig into the archives of the internet there was a company called hitbox and i don't remember who wrote an, a story about them but there was an article that was published years and years ago about their um, hardware configuration how it was set up and essentially they had um i don't maybe it was hundreds of servers and they were all using flat files so they were, they were not using databases back then. You would just have a comma delimited file uh, .dot .cs, um, csv file, which be co uh, comma separated values. That it was that kind of um, that was that was how you did it. So you would just uh, you could just open your text file there your co of comma separated values, and you could see all the data. And that worked, you know, it worked really well for years and years. In fact, um, that's the way I was doing it for a long time. Um, you know, since I learned programming as a kid until probably 2004, comma separated values. I, I, of course, I didn't really use commas, but um, it's not really that important. Um, in any case, so you had these um, Perl scripts that could record what people clicked on and the first company that um, that was doing this professionally and you could say it was the first analytics company it was called outstats o u t s t a t s and you probably it you might not even find any information about this anywhere in wikipedia because i'm I'm telling you stuff that probably you know very very few people remember or even were aware of back then. But uh, Outstats was I would say the first uh, the first analytics company back in 1999. Um, I I was um, just graduating from college when this came out, and it was a 
paid application. I don't remember how much it cost, but essentially what the author did was they took one of um, these free Perl scripts and they added, um, you know, some basic, uh, you know, charts so you could see who your top referrers are. And if, if you're in Google Analytics, um, the equivalent of that would be if you um, clicked on your audience tab and you can see who your um, your sources of traffic are that would be that was the original out stats right there so it would it would just be like ranked from 1 to 10 or something like that and there might be like a like a line showing you you know that person clicked this many times from um Actually, I don't even remember exactly uh, how, if it might have just been referrals, it might have just been referrals, or it might have also done clicks. I don't even remember, but that was the first um, analytics company, and they don't even, they weren't even calling it analytics until maybe 2005 or 2006, or even 2007. Um, no, I think it might have been 2005 they started calling it analytics. Or it was around 2005. So the first name they called it was Metrics. And I'll give a shout out to Marshall Sponder. He was um, the web metrics guru. That was his blog. And me and Marshall were the first guys that were blogging about this right when blogging started out in 2004. And we and, it, and coincidentally, we're both visual artists and we would go back and forth with um, emails and stuff talking about analytics and, and art. But um, let me back up a little bit. Um, so after, let's say around 1999, we were still um, just, we we're just tracking clicks with CGI and you know that was that was pretty uh, you know informative and it, it's funny that um, Google didn't even start tracking clicks this way until around 2007 I don't remember the exact date but I think it was 2006 or 2007 or 2008 uh, so if you would have gone to google.com and done a search, and then if you did a view source on the, the source code on the, on the google.com, you could see that Google was taking you directly to the, um, the website. They didn't even use a redirect script to track how many times you clicked each link. So they had no way of knowing which links were the most popular. I thought that was really surprising. I mean, it was, it was nice of Google to do that, but I don't think it was just being nice. I think they were just ignorant and they didn't even know about um, this technology until, um, like I said, seven or eight years after the fact. So um, the next evolution would, after the CGI, was, um, let's see, There was, oh, cookies. Cookies came around 2000. I think it was the year 2000. Cookies were starting to reach browsers. And there was maybe, I remember around 2000, maybe 10, 15, 20% of browsers had cookies. And people were really concerned about cookies at first because this was the first time ever that we would allow a website to send any data to the user's computer. I mean, everybody was really trying to make the internet a safe place, and uh, that's actually one of the reasons why Java was created with uh, the Java Virtual Machine. It's because we didn't want um, a hacker to get into your computer and be able to run code. So the cookie. The cookie was a really huge innovation because it, it was the first time that a website could record any kind of information on the user's computer. 
However, it was very, very limited. Um, the, the length of the cookie was something like 250 something characters. The cookies were only stored for a limited amount of time. You could only have a certain number of cookies. They all had an expiration date and so on. So, and, and a lot of people deleted their cookies or just blocked cookies altogether. So, but at the same time, um, it started to become the default and non-technical people. Of course, they weren't even paying attention to this whole phenomenon and, and they were uh, so now for the first time you could track people like animals um, you know it's like it was like having a you'd tag it a cow or something you could tag a person the same way and uh, so if they left your website and then they came back you could you could say oh, okay you know you're you're my lost pet you left you left the website and I found you again um, you know it's <laughs> it's you know whether or not you agree with with it or not it's you know it was revolutionary at the time and there was there was a, a a backlash and i think a lot of people you know at first it was pretty much harmless because you know maybe just saving some information about the user like maybe the user's preferences but eventually we got into things that were more about like um tagging the user with an with an identification number, um, and at first, at first the the browsers tried to block this by saying, well, only first party cookies can be read by the website. But of course, it, you know that became pretty much a silly way of blocking people from trying to track users because a um, you could just have a third party do the do the tracking and then the third parties could exchange information from each other um, outside of the website you know in the background somewhere behind the scenes or you know maybe there was like a some kind of um, script that ran in the website that that was you know had that had a first party relationship with the with the user so, um, in any case, yeah, so cookies were picking up around 2000, and that opened the door to all kinds of innovations, because even if you didn't um, have much storage space on the user's computer, you could um, tie that ID number that you gave that user, you could tie that ID number to all kinds of data that was being stored um, on your on your website and like I just said the that data could be traded with other companies so um, that was a big deal and shortly after that um, let's see so by so by 2000 JavaScript had already been around since 1994 so um, you know that was six years of JavaScript. So JavaScript was still in its infancy, but it was it was evolved enough that the um, the 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 metrics they weren't I guess they were called metrics um, applications out there were were starting to collect information about the user's browser. So when you click on something on a on a website, the CGI script. Um, to, now today it's in Perl or PHP. Actually, I'm sorry. Today it's usually in PHP. The CGI is capturing browser information through the um, they call it the, the server environment. But there's also um, information about the browser that you can collect only through JavaScript. And I'm not even, I haven't even looked at what kind of information you can collect from the browser through JavaScript, but um, you can look that up yourself. But to say um, the least, it's, it's, you're able to collect a little bit more information about the user through JavaScript than you could just get through the CGI environment. <clears throat> um, and so I would say those were the first three innovations in analytics the cgi javascript browser environment 
And the, the, the critical part of the JavaScript component was finding out where people came from. Because if you sent me a click from another website, and I could look at my stats and see, okay, you came from somewhere. But JavaScript allowed you to um, see where they came from in more detail. To say the least, I mean, it's, it would get a little bit more complicated. But essentially, the, the JavaScript um, allowed the, the early analytics tr tracking companies to see where people were coming from and collect more information about the users. And, and granted, um, nobody was calling these analytics companies at this point. Um, I'd say one of the probably most famous companies that eventually changed names a couple times. I, I, the original, one of the original ones was called Hitbox. And then that company became, um, yeah, that was basically, it was like a bunch of top lists of different categories. Like you'd have a, you know, a category like phishing and it would show you all the top phishing websites. And then that company became Website Story. Um, I don't remember the exact year that transition happened, but that, then they, that, I would say that was the first big data company, maybe. They decided that the business model of having all of these um, directories wasn't working because the, the old model of having um, directories of links, that was sort of becoming less popular. And so I think more people are going to Google or whatever. But Website Story had this idea that you would pay a membership for access to their data because they had their tracking code in everybody's website at this point so they were able to gather data like how many what percentage of users have a certain kind of screen resolution or what percentage of users speak english spanish um you know all this you know what what's the most popular version of javascript you know all these kinds of things a website story was selling to the general public with the membership and i believe that company changed names or it was bought and um, I, uh, I think they were in San Jose, California at some point. And then eventually they were bought by Adobe. I th I'm pretty sure. Um, I don't remember the exact year that was. And whatever happens with that company, I haven't really been following um, what, it's, you know, what, what Adobe ended up ultimately doing with that. I'm not sure. <clears throat> um, and what year did the super cookie come about? I don't even know. Um, it, you know, that's sort of after I had lost, I had already lost interest in this stuff around maybe um, 2000 and, well, let me, let me go back before I uh, get to that point. So we had the three things. We had CGI. We had JavaScript, and we had cookies. And that was, you know, that was a, there was a lot you could do with that. Um, and then I would say 2004 was um, a pivotal year because that's when blogging became popular for the first time. So people were writing about this stuff for the first time. And like I was saying, um, Marshall and I, I, I think I was, I mean, I don't know when Marshall started, but I'm pretty sure I started before he did. And one of the things I was blogging about back in 2004 was click fraud and just tracking people in general. And I, I wasn't aware of any other blogs that were, that were blogging about this. Um, and I was also blogging about MySpace. Coincidentally, it was a, MySpace was a brand new website that, that was starting to catch on. And what happened was a rumor got out that you could see who was um, looking at you on on MySpace, which which had a lot to do with uh, tracking users 
on the internet. And because I was the only person that was blogging about MySpace and internet tracking, Google had all these people searching their web, um, their search engine for information about this rumor. And before I, I had, I ended up having um, millions and millions of people coming to my blog that were sent from Google. So I wrote a few articles about this, uh, actually more than a few. I wrote probably over a hundred articles about um, web tracking and and that's how I found um, Marshall Sponder he's uh, his his blog was called web metrics guru and he's um, he's still he's still blogging he's teaching a class at a I think I think Rutgers University I'm not sure I I'd have to look that up um, he's, he's teaching a class about social media analytics I believe and um, tracking fashion data I'm not sure you'd have to you'd have to look up his um, information um, so what happened um, I don't remember the exact year I'd have to look it up but so we're blogging about this and I get a email from uh, a company called Garrison Lehrman Group. I can't even pronounce it. GLG. You can Google that. And they're looking for they're looking to pay experts who have expertise in different things. So I sign up because I'm thinking, hey, this is great. I can just tell people about what I know and make money. So I sign up and say, yeah, I'm the uh, you know analytics traffic expert, and you know I have all this technology experience. So I get a um, I get and I get a contact from them and they say a, a, a major search company wants to um, wants to know wants to pay you to hear what you think about the future of search engines so at, at, at that time I, mean, I knew exactly what I wanted to say um, because previous to getting that email there was this website I I'm not I'm sort of fuzzy about the name of the website but I think it was called actually I can't even remember the name of it it might have been called blog shares but I'm not sure but essentially it was like a stock market game for websites where each website on the internet was a stock and that website had some various crawlers that would crawl all the websites that were in the game and then they would collect various kinds of data like how popular is the website um, you know I don't even remember what kind of statistics they had um, but essentially it was just a lot of data that they you know and it was not even meant to be used for any um, particular reason it was just um, it was just for entertainment value for fun it, you know the the data wasn't even useful so it was just a game but but that got me thinking um, and it also gave me an example to um, to tell GLG so I said you know I think the the future of search engines is going to be like this game where you have all this data about each website and that would allow you to um, you know give you better search results because you can um, you know if you're tracking how popular the website is based on all this data then you could provide better search results so it was yeah I wrote them I remember I was um, I wrote them a pretty long crazy uh, you know prediction about where how it's all going to be about data and uh, within I think it was within two months Google bought this company called Urchin which was a um, which was a web analytics company that nobody had heard of but um, apparently that was 
commercially successful. And um, yeah, so it, and then Google, shortly after that, they offered, they renamed it to Google Analytics. And so when you use Google Analytics, that's exactly what you're, what you're using. It's um, It was originally called Urchin, and that was a company they bought. And they gave away Google Analytics for free, which um, which was really nice. And 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 I must say, you know, it was it was it was a fantastic implementation. The the graphics were were like pretty much better than anything else that were that was out there. There was another company that. Um, there was another small company that made um, a, some blog statistics. I can't remember the name of the company right now, but Google bought them out too. So it seemed like... And there was another company called PageRank. No, not I'm sorry, not PageRank, PostRank. There was a company called PostRank that was doing some um, data collection about blog post popularity Google bought them also so it seemed like Google would just buy anything that had that had you know data um, about links on on the internet and let's see so I would say that's really that's a short brief history of the of the history of analytics um, around 2000 like I said around 2000 five um, people nobody really knew what to call this new thing of of all this you know tracking all this data so no one was even using the word analytics it was just they they were throwing around the word metrics which is I think where uh, the web metrics guru Marshall he that's how he came up with his name um, but there was no this analytics word was still emerging and I remember there was a there was a some kind of association that was forming and all these people I remember joining and, and they said everybody on there was saying you know what are we going to call this thing should we call it analytics and I don't even know if the analytics association is still around but um, I I was writing about this even before the analytics association had started and and I decided to call it ferrodynamics which is the latin for you know to carry change and my my idea came from this uh, php script that I wrote in 2003 and essentially my php script was able to map out click behavior um because at around that time there was a lot of uh, what, you, what you call these click bots where people were, were for the first time creating sophisticated robots that would click on links and it became very difficult to find out who was cheating you so um, mapping out all this mapping out all these numbers became really important to to see you know who was using a robot and who wasn't and so I thought you know this is different than regular metrics because I'm not just measuring something I'm actually visualizing the data I'm 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 making data about data or I'm I'm creating this like I'm creating a big picture overview of how the numbers are changing so I figured that deserved a new name, so I came up with Ferrodynamics. Of course, it didn't catch on because, you know, I'm not, um, you know, I, I didn't work with the university or any, it was just kind of working in isolation. I was sort of hoping it would catch on and I would be the one that coined the name, but it, it you know, didn't become, <laughs> Ferrodynamics ended up becoming something else because my blog became more popular for um, emoticons. <laughs> Uh, and I was in, I ended up being ranked number one in Google for the the keyword symbols and the keyword um, hearts and peace symbols. So it was it was a strange um, it was strange how that how things how uh, that 
all the search traffic sort of changes things. But in any case, um, I thought it was important to sort of lay out how you know an where analytics came from. I was telling some, I was telling some people like a user experience um, student the other day about this, and he said, "Oh, I'd never even." I never even thought about where analytics came from. I just, you know, I guess it's not something that people talk about. So I thought it was important to share share this. Um, and you know, if the, and um, there were other companies that did analytics, and I'm, I'm probably, you know, I probably left them out of this, you know, out of the history. Um, so feel feel free to leave a comment and you know tell the story about how you know where your analytics company came from. Um, you know, and I apologize. I I didn't list out all of the um, analytics companies, but you know, as you know, Google Analytics was the main one, and you know, it was popular because Google gave it away for free. I think there was other competing applications around the time that Google bought Urchin, and they were actually Urchin was a paid solution, so you would have had to have paid for Urchin. But when Google bought it, they gave it away for free. So that pretty much blew out all the anyone who had a analytics application for sale. They were pretty much out of business because you had really the best solution out there, and it was free for anyone to get um, as a as a beta tester. Um, and then, of course, Google started rolling all that. So now Google has tracking scripts. They, as people were starting to implement their Google Analytics, you know, on their website, now Google has access to all of the data of all of the websites. So they know exactly what everyone is doing on the internet, and they can um, channel all that information into. Google AdWords, which is exactly what they do um, with uh, interest-based advertising. Of course, the the administrator has to approve that, and they have to enable the um, the interest-based advertising through um, Google Analytics, and also I think you have to enable that through um, Google AdSense if you have Google AdSense. And you, um, you know, if you have a privacy policy, you would have to update that accordingly to reflect the, you know, the information gathering. But you know, essentially, um, Google Analytics was sort of a game changer that allowed Google to serve um, ads that were more relevant to um, what you, what you personally wanted. You know, in in their best estimation, you, know, if you might go to Google, and or you might be on a web page, you might just be on some random web page, and you see that little ad in the side, and it says, um, you know, ads by Google or something. In the little corner, it tells you it's a, it's a Google ad. Of course, that ad is partly based on the content that's in the page, but um, they're also feeding in all of this Google Analytics data. So they're doing correlations and saying, okay, well, you know, a thousand other people came to this page and maybe 50% of them were interested in golf, even though the page is about something else. So they can extrapolate all kinds of things from um, all that data. So uh, that's just something I wanted to share. And uh, I'm, there's a lot, a lot more happened after Google bought Urchin, and after they named it Analytics, a lot, a lot, a lot more happened. Um, oh, one more thing I should mention before I close this out. Um, there was a company called DoubleClick, another company that Google bought. Uh, this was around, what year was it? It was around 1999, and my friend that I worked with at the internet service provider, Gustavo Morales, he is an opera singer. Um, he was a, he was our sales guy and he, uh, you know, we'd talk about music 
And of course, um, Double Click was in New York. So that was perfect for him because he got to be in New York with all the arts and work for this, this uh, great internet company that was starting up called Double Click. And that was one of the first companies that was tracking um, people's, I guess, uh, not tr well, they were tracking the performance of ads for the first time. And, um, the, you know, I actually, I wrote the same script on a napkin around the same time that, that Double Click started. And I, at, a, at a very simple level, all you were doing there is just tracking, like if you had 10 ads and one of them was getting clicked on more, you would want to put that more popular ad above the other ads, or you would want, um, and the, they called that a banner farm. Or, or if you had banners that were rotating, you might have wanted to show the popular ad before the less popular ad. So that's basically what DoubleClick was doing on a much larger scale. And uh, I got a I got an opportunity. I didn't have an interview there. Um, I don't even remember if I submitted my application. I think I did, but I was I just happened to be in New York around 1999. I think it was or 2000. It might have been 2000. And uh, I was visiting Gustavo, and. He gave me a little tour of the office, and I remember it vividly. I remember it vividly. They had, um, you know, you had to, you had these. When you first came in the building, there was like these glass walls, and you could see all the servers behind the glass. Just like a huge stack of servers. And, um, you know, he gave me a little tour through the office, and they had an amazing balcony um, where you could go take your laptop. I didn't go out there. But I remember it was really it was really cool, um, yeah. So that's and then as you know, Google bought DoubleClick, and uh, you know the rest is history. So if you have any more information, you know I, I'm sure some people will say, oh no, that's not the way it happened or whatever. You know, go ahead and um, you know share your part of the story because there's obviously there's only so much I can talk about in a 45 minute uh, <laughs> um, podcast. All right. So thanks for listening. And I hope I didn't put you to sleep. Um, and I'll be posting more stuff like this. Um, probably not about analytics, but I, but this, this, this will probably be a, be a one time thing for me, but um, I hope you uh, check out some of my other content in the future. All right. Thank you.